Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You can take your pick for whichever that applies to uh, for you. This is the fourth small group meeting of our OWLS and virtual flight conversation series, where we discuss matters related to the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Jana Brady. I'm a geographer lecturer uh, at Southern Connecticut State University, and I have partnered with Southern's Office of International Education to present this series. We have an incredibly diverse group here spanning several continents and cultures, uh, but one of our unifying traits is that we're all students, or you're all students, navigating through some point of your academic journey. Some of you are first years, and this is all new to you. Others have reached the finish line. Um, what I'm interested in hearing about today is what's normal at your university in terms of uh, academic life and campus life, and how has that shifted because of COVID-19? Um, and how has your university worked to re uh, replicate some of, of that over the last few months? Um, Danielle, can you start us off? Yes. Hi, so I'm from Southern, um, and I am entering my senior year uh, and I'm an off-campus student, you know, but since before COVID. So just in terms of university life to start with, obviously I've never been as involved as a student who would be on campus. And I actually found that, you know, being busy with work and school stuff, it was kind of hard to participate in on-campus activities before the pandemic. But after the pandemic started, they were offering a lot more stuff online and stuff that I could more easily participate in. And so I actually found myself kind of more involved in university life and just doing activities other than, you know, I would work on campus, but just doing stuff for fun. Um, so they did like a walking challenge where everyone was trying to um, get as many steps in over the course of, I think it was April. Um, you know, things like that that I thought were really creative and a great way to get involved, even when we couldn't all be together. Um, and then in terms of classes, I was just completing um, the end of my major last semester, and I have a few more classes to wrap up in the following semester or in next semester. Um, so I really knew my professors very well. There would be sometimes um, we'd kind of have small meetings with our professors and just talk one-on-one. -on -one. It would be super casual. And then there would be other times that we met with our whole class in a Teams call like this. Um, and they would do the typical lecture. Uh, some classes were synchronous and some classes were asynchronous. So meaning that we would have live lectures um, like for one of my classes, we would meet at 3.15 every Tuesday and Thursday, um, and that was synchronous. And then for my asynchronous classes, uh, one of my professors, you know, she has four kids under the age of like eight. So she couldn't carve out that time just to meet with us every single week, twice a week. Um, so she would record lectures and provide a lot of links and videos, and then we would meet and talk if we had any questions or something like that. Uh, and it's very challenging, I would say, to not have that divide between school and coming home and, you know, not having that social aspect. And I, I think towards the end, you know, finals always gets crazy, but I was definitely working a lot harder trying to keep up with, you know, all of the assignments um, cause I feel like in part, you know, my classes weren't designed to be online. They were kind of trying to make up for missed class time. So it was, it was a huge challenge. I'd never done classes online. I'm very grateful. Um, I think it's made me a lot better at video calls and that kind of thing. And I think they're the future of education. So it's an important skill that we've all learned very quickly. Um, but Tamara, do you have any ideas on this? Yes, Danielle. So um, unlike you, like I was very involved on campus, like pretty involved on campus. Um, so like I was a member of um, Student Government Association. I was a member of um, the Caribbean Student Association. So I was just like really active on campus, always doing something. So um, when before the um, pandemic or everything hit, 
like it was like Southern's campus is a very social, like you get a social vibe. Like there's always something to do. There's never really a time where there's nothing to do. So um, seeing that and then transitioning to everybody so separated now, like, you know, like we have to basically, we can't connect physically, but like we, we're, we're depending on um, either like Teams calls and Zooms and stuff like that. And it's just like, it's like when we log in, you know, it's like you're seeing somebody you've never seen in a, in a long time. You're like, oh my God, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Like, how's everything? Are you safe? Are you sure? Like, <laughs> you know, is, everyone, is your family okay? Like, it's sort of kind of like a you, you gain a sense of appreciation for connections. Um, something that we took for granted. Uh, actually, I took it for granted because now, I'm sorry, there's like a lot of noise outside, but um, something that I took for granted because I did, nobody could actually visualize something like this happening and having to put us all, you know, on just, just stay at home and just go um, online and stuff like that. So, um, but I believe Southern did a great job transitioning. Um, they were very quick with it. And I know like they might have been situations where it was a bit difficult deciding, okay, what classes we should put online and, you know, all these different things. But if it was difficult, in my opinion, I don't think they made it look difficult. Um, but one thing I can say is that I, I was taking summer classes over the summer. So it's like, that was completely online. It's, it's some classes that there's no, it, it's very difficult to, it's, it's, there's labs. So how do you do labs online? Like you don't get that hands-on, you know, physical touch to, to try. I'm a, I'm a visual learner. So I, I tend, I, I learn more by doing. So if I'm not doing it, it's pretty hard for me to grasp the concept of what you're trying to teach me. But in all, in, in all honesty, I, I see this as like, yes, this is the best that the school can do. Like, there's really nothing we might have. We want, we might want more, but there's literally nothing that we can do at this moment. Like the, whatever they have done and whatever that, whatever Southern is doing is the best that they can possibly do aligning with all state regulations and public health regulations and all these different things. So I can say the transition, at least for me, was pretty smooth. Um, I don't like online classes, so this was, it was something, it took some getting used to, but besides that, you know, it was, you know, good, it was okay. <laughs> Do you have anything to say, Maria? Um, yes, thank you, Tamara. First of all, uh, I want to say that, yes, the same in Armenia was happening, that the transition was so rapid. I was, like, really surprised that our university was that ready to start online classes because they were like sitting and waiting for online world to happen. Uh, I was really satisfied with the quality we had. Of course, I, I literally understand you that um, I hate online classes as you do, but uh, still it was good. And I just want to point out uh, about uh, the student life uh, that we are trying to catch up with. Uh, like some months after the lockdown, uh, our university created a student union online. Like we have the physical student union where we can like uh, hang out together, like meet new people, do some movie screenings. And now they somehow brought this into like real life. Uh, and I'm sorry, they are uh, saying about like wearing a mask and washing hands also like in the topic. Uh, so yes, uh, now we have student union online and I guess kind of this helped us to have even more uh, interaction like um, in this online world. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you have anything like this that can help you to keep up with your friends or probably meet new students that you didn't know before? Um, yes, we do. So Southern did a great job of um, using Instagram and, and a lot of the social medias to like really keep try and keep students um, connected. The only thing that I can say is that it it's on the students to take the initiative to go to these things because they are there, you know, like the, the events are there. There, there are events like daily. Um, 
not aware if there are as much now because we entered the summer, but I don't know. But um, there are events. It's just that, like, as as students, like, I don't know if um, a lot of students are taking the initiative or might be taking the initiative to attend mm-hmm. these Zoom online events because I, I, I know that it's one thing to physically be there, but it's also another thing to, like, just have to open your laptop and then log in and then find this or, like, you know, if you're already doing something on your phone that, like, mm-hmm. you can take that time out to go and, like, click on and pay attention to what's going on over there. So it's, like, there are events, yes, there are events, and our um, student government, actually, they're doing a good job, you know, they're, they're constantly present, so they're doing a great job. And um, all of the other um, organizations, like, they're finding their own way of in which to bring the, bring, bring and keep their community together. So I, I believe Southern is doing a good job at that, yes. Great. I could continue. Uh, okay. I could. Uh, I should point out that in terms of initiative, um, I think she's very right because, for example, me, since I'm a graduate student, I wasn't as interested in like keeping the campus live in some way. So I actually don't follow like my university Instagram, so I wouldn't be able to say exactly what's happening in terms of online content and trying to bring people together. But at John Moss, Liverpool John Moss, the university I am, we we're not like in America, we don't have um, campus or in the dorms in the campus. But I think student life always been quite good because we always had like clubs you could join all different types of clubs and they also had normal events I went multiple times to watch movies with for free or very low price theaters or activities obviously now mm, there's not a lot of that <laughs> and because I don't follow them social media and things like that um, I don't know if that's still doing it as much or trying to do an alternative but in terms of uh, studying of and teaching I was actually in a different position than most of you because as my last year I only had to complete a placement and unfortunately that placement got uh, cancelled so the university actually re- responded quickly and they gave us a, an alternative project to replace that uh, placement. And although we were a bit sad and because we missed that uh, work experience, we still had like a something that could help us gain experience from the university, I would say. And we did different projects and things like that, like in the real world, but you know. Um, but I think they were really supportive. We always communicate by email and we continue. Um, we al- often also went to the uh, our teacher's office and, you know, just ask any type of questions or even personal or even uni-wise. And I think they've always been very supportive. Now they also helped us with pushing deadlines. They are adapting for everyone. Uh, they also having a lot of help. If you need uh, anything else, We they can... Um, you could schedule a Zoom meeting with them. You can ask any type of questions you want to regarding your module, regarding your classes next year. So mm-hmm. I think they've been very involved. Could uh, you say that you get like closer with your professors after uh, the online classes? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I didn't have online classes. I was just, we only had to do projects and we nice. had to submit it online, but... You said uh, you had some Zoom meetings, like you could yeah. have some Zoom Yeah, they send us emails saying that if we need anything, discuss anything for that needs to discuss, we could schedule a Zoom meeting with them. So yeah, you could, I think teachers here are very open. You could talk to them about just your normal life. Uh, I remember my supervisor, we were talking about Easter and chocolate <laughs> and things like that. So I think com- the relationship is casual, but also professional at the same time. 
I just have a question. So first of all, what's your major? Or like what were you, what you were in grad school? Oh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I just graduated from nutrition. Awesome. So mm -hmm. in terms of your placement at first, I kind of thought of it as like a placement exam. And then I realized that it was more kind of like, you know, student teaching or something like that. Um, but I have a few friends who were in programs for teaching where they were supposed to complete their hours for, you know, working at a school. And I, they've had trouble with like schools, you know, they go out, they're trying to apply to jobs and the schools are now like, well, you didn't get the, you didn't finish your student teaching. So, you know, good uh, luck, but we won't take you. Have you had any problems with? No, our placement was just to gain experience in the real life world. So we had to look for a company or somewhere who could provide us that um, real life experience. And after we set a contract with them for the placement and everything, that would just be like um, a reference. So they would give us a um, uh, real life experience and a reference that was what we could gain from that placement. It, it's not necessary for our uh, for a degree yeah. compared to your friends. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm I'm glad that your university was able to adapt to that so well. Yeah, it adapt, but unfortunately, I won't be able to have reference from outside the university. That's the really annoying thing. Yeah. Did anyone experience something similar or lost an opportunity because of the changes we have to adapt? Okay, I can continue. Uh, so in Spain, um, the classes were online. Uh, we had like the same timetable that you had during the year. So you had to connect uh, with the teachers and they explain you uh, things or um, just give you homework or things like that. And then you just had to do it at home and then send it to them and they will correct it. And then uh, I don't like either uh, online classes <laughs> because I think that it's easier when you are in class and you can ask directly to the teacher or you can ask to a classmate or maybe after a class go to the pub and have something or go to a cinema, have more social life, I'd say. And then um, next week, uh, next uh, course, I think that uh, we will be doing half online and half uh, in the university, but it's not uh, sure at the moment. But I don't know if it will be good, if we will have problems, because I think it's really hard to combine like all the students from the university to go in smaller groups and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, yeah. So I believe that in your university, like not all, all people are in Spain, right? Not all the students are there. So as you said, uh, you're going to do like half going to university and half online. Uh, how would you manage with the students who are like out of the country? Will they miss a lot of things or not? Hmm. I think this one is a big problem because um, some people was going to do an Erasmus or other people an exchange and they don't know like what will happen. For example, I was going uh, to France, uh, but at the moment we don't know anything what to do or if we continue, if we should stay uh, in Spain. It, it's a really big problem, but they don't know how to manage to do this thing. But uh, I guess that uh, if you are doing an Erasmus or an exchange, it will depend on the other university, not from the university in Spain. I don't know. It's complicated. <laughs> Thank you. Can you um can you explain what an Erasmus is? Like um, 
Oh, yeah. And Erasmus is uh, an exchange in Europe, like from countries from Europe, uh, from the European Union, and it gives like money to you and you can go and study in a European university. It's just the name. Um, we don't call it exchange, we say it Erasmus. For example, if I would go to um, a United States, I would say exchange, but if I go to France, I would say Erasmus. <laughs> I wanted to say they also have Erasmus for internships, and I was actually trying yeah. to apply mm. for one, and I found that a lot of them you can do it now online, which is good, but I'm still looking for one that is actually on the ground because that'll be obviously more interesting. So Nus, I have a question. Um, yeah. um, for your online classes, right? Were you, can you say that you interacted more with the professors now than you did before? Yeah, I would say that yes, but it depends uh, on who, because there were some professors who were like, okay, just send me these or that. And there were others with, emails uh, or weeks, uh, do you need help? Are you okay? Are you safe? And I would say that there were some professors really good that they really helped us and others who were just so-so. <laughs> I can say like for my, like let's say the past semester that I just finished, um, like my professors, they did an amazing job at adapting mm -hmm. because I had professors basically saying, okay, I am aware of the situation that's going on and I'm gonna make a, a change to like how the end of the course will be. So like they either um, made some projects shorter or like just do the whole project out itself and just um, replaced it with something else um, so that we can easily adapt to it because like there were students who were missing classes, you know, and, um, I believe the transition to online has seen a, a, a dip in student performance. So um, my professors really made it, um, I think they made it their duty to make sure that like their students were good and that we were okay and our mental state of being was good. So they took that into consideration. So I can say that that's my experience with that. Um, and what are you studying at the moment? Public health. Oh, okay. Yeah, and a minor in chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Tamara, did they take into consideration like what you want? Did they ask first of all, like to you, if you want this to be like that or not? Yes. Like, so, do you want group projects or like an online exam? No, no, no. They, they, <laughs> they, they did. They did. Um, they sent out, I believe, it was a survey, and oh. um you just, or it was either, it was, okay, one was a survey and then another was just during our Zoom call. They were like, okay, do you want a final or not? Like, do you want a final project um, or a final exam or would you prefer this? And they, they turned something that was like optional and they made it required to like make up for, you know, some of the drops that they, they had. So it's just like, the class agreed to it, so we all agreed. We we all were like, "Yeah, no final, yes, let's do this." Like, you know, exam. <laughs> let's do this. We'll do this project. Um, uh, but yeah, I, was I have a question, like to everyone. So in in my university, we had this uh, this question about pass and no pass system because a lot of students believed that okay, if we're online uh, from the middle of the semester, maybe it would be better if we like stop the greetings and go to pass and no pass system. So how did you deal with gradings? Uh, do you um, use pass and no pass or you still go with grading? So Southern, um, they allowed for an option for students to do um, pass or fail. And I think the class couldn't be like in your major or like required you know it couldn't be something where they really kind of needed to see your GPA to make sure that you were doing well enough to maintain that major so for me 
I didn't take the option to do any pass or fails because I mean, first of all, like I, I was doing well enough that I wanted to maintain my GPA. (laughs) Um, And second of all, I was taking pretty much all like, you know, required kind of major or minor stuff. Um, But I, I did talk to some people who, if it was a class that they really just like were worried about, they weren't too interested in it in the first place. Um, It was, it was really helpful for them. And, you know, I think there are a lot of students too, who just don't have the same, you know, like I have amazing resources, like I have a laptop and Wi-Fi and a place I can go sit in quiet and I don't have to worry about making food for my whole family or taking care of a sibling or any of that kind of stuff. And I think it's really challenging to take a kid who is living on campus and then all of a sudden have them living at home because there's probably a reason they were living on campus. You know, it's not like they might have the resources that I have, but maybe they're also very distracted by living at home with their family or something like that. Oh, I just want to say that here at Liverpool John Moss, um, well, first of all, they start helping us with giving us more time to do our work because they push a lot of the deadlines. For example, I have a friend who was supposed to submit something in March, but because she's with, she has kids and she doesn't have the, the apps she needs for it, they extended until, I think, until August or something. So they're giving him a lot of time. And also they are looking at our grades and seeing if there's a lot of changes. So if, for example, our grades drop a lot or something like that throughout the whole overall year, they're actually going to take the grade out. So that increases our overall score. And what else? Oh, they're also rounding up our grades. For example, if you have a 68 or 69, they give you 70. Where in the past they only gave you they only round up your grade if you had, for example, 69.5 or something like that. So they'll look at those type of systems to help us. We don't have the choice either to do it. Is it pass or fail? We don't have those choice, but they're doing all these different types of systems and to help us, which I think is very useful and helpful. Well, I think in Spain was similar. Uh, We could do or even pass or fail exams, or then you could do some homework during the period of the quarantine, and they would mark uh, this homework and not just the the only the the finals. I think it was good because uh, you could show like your process and not just maybe that day you couldn't uh, do the exam properly or something like that uh, due to other factors like uh, Daniel said maybe you have to take care of somebody or you don't have a quiet room or things like that hmm. I have a question what are you guys missing more out of study mm-hmm. online and not going to uni, uh, university and everything. <laughs> um, I'll answer that. For me, it's the social aspect of um, campus because we, we, we did like a lot of um, fun things. So there are days where we like we could go to the movies, like you could go out to eat. Um, like they had, liter- all right, our spring we're supposed to have our spring concert we're supposed to get like this big celebrity to come and you know perform for us and it was supposed to be like a a a time of like just celebration like you know it's the spring you know let's celebrate Mm -hmm. um that got canceled all these things was just like and i never got the opportunity to ever go to a spring concert so it's just like this one time I was like here because before I was studying abroad, so I didn't get the opportunity to. And um, so it's just like, ah, oh, man, now I'm here. Like, I, we can do this. It's just like, no, you can't. You can't do this. We have to go home. And 
Um, but I definitely miss the social aspect of it. I miss um, bothering my like professors or like um, the administrators. Like there's some people who like in certain organizations that like every day, like no day passed where I wasn't like in their office and just like saying hi or like, okay, how's your day going? What's going on? So I, I miss like, I miss being that bug, like I'm that little nagging bug. Like I miss, the, <laughs> I miss doing that. So now it's just like, I can't do that. I'm just, just here. Like I have no choice, but to try and like, like I have no choice, but to do work before it was like, okay, you know, today I can do work, but right now I, I, I want to just like probably take a time and just relax, you know, and just relax for a moment. But now I have no choice. I just have to do work. Like that's no choice but to do work. <laughs> So I miss the social aspect of it. I definitely agree. You know, I miss the social stuff. And, you know, to add to some of the stuff they do on campus, just like the small things, every Thursday they would do PB&J Thursdays. So they'd have all the bread and the peanut butter. And I think they would have Nutella sometimes and the deli and like all these snacks. And it's just kind of a fun thing. You walk by, grab something. Um, and then they also, um, they do cultural fest out on the quad. And, you know, there's all different kinds of food available. I'm, I'm such like a food, you know, if there's food in an event, I'm there. <laughs> so Like Southern, <laughs> literally Southern <laughs> always, always has free food. Like there's never a day yeah. there's no free food. Like that was, that was my highlight of the day. Like if I was hungry. I could depend on the fact that, okay, Southern, there was some way I was going to get some free food. Like, there was always free food. So, yes, Daniel, I agree with you. Yes. And then the other thing that I missed, and I really didn't realize how important it is until I was, like, sitting in a chair going from class to class to class. Like, I think in the beginning of the semester, on Thursdays, I had class from 12 until 7.30. Like, it like after right like during COVID so that was all online 12 to 7 30 I was like class to class to class it was craziness um but was walking between classes walking around campus getting that little bit of nature in between classes and that little bit of exercise and sitting in a chair for so long without moving like that it just it did crazy things to like how tight or sore my body felt um and also I felt like it was much easier to kind of refresh your brain during that little reset between classes um and so it was it was very strange and like it just became so monotonous when it was like you know online class to the next and my professors would often go over the amount of time that they were a lot like that they had planned on when we were doing online classes rather than in person, because obviously in person they're cognizant of like, okay, you need to leave and walk to a ne your next class now. And during this, it was like, oh, we'll just go 30 minutes over. And like, you know, if you have another class, maybe you like leave and you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Maria? Um, I would say that um, I'm really sorry we are missing the spring ball. Like we usually have two like parties, university parties. It's one is a winter ball, which we managed to do. And the other one, which is also like a huge event, um, is a spring ball that I'm really sorry we missed. But like overall, um, there are like some really tiny details that I miss about the university life that there is no way we can do it online like I don't know maybe morning coffee drinking coffee in the morning with friends or I don't know just hugging people in the corridors or like I don't know just to say hi to people like not in this online world but in real world so I don't know I, I just feel like there are these tiny social things that was actually making us feel connected even to those people that are not our friends that we don't even know or we're just taking a class together so this is what I really really miss um, 
I really hope we can get, go back to campus, like not for the next semester, but for the uh, next spring semester, hopefully. Um, what about you? Oh, for me, it would probably be because this year I was supposed to graduate. I mean, I'm yeah. still, but we were supposed to have this big graduation event, even this ball where everyone would go nicely, have invitations. So I'll probably, I'll very sad I'm missing that. And I think, uh, have, you, go, sorry? Yeah, have you done like an online graduation? No, for us, they just push it and they said maybe the end of the year mm -hmm. or maybe <laughs> next year so mm -hmm. they told us we'll still have a graduation but we don't know when okay what else do you like anything else i think i miss also um we used to have a lot of group or presentations and things like that and just before we actually present, it would always I have this fun vibe where everyone would, you know, just play around with each other. And our teachers were also a lot like that. They would always make jokes or something like that to make the atmosphere nicer. So kind of miss those picky moments. <laughs> Well, I have a question. Do you know what your university will be doing like in September? Or yes, uh, I will do online or? Uh, for me. Oh, all of you, I don't oh. mind. Yeah. <laughs> I could start. I know my, gra uh, I spoke with one of some of my teachers and they said they are planning to reshuffle the classes. So the classes that could be taught online are going to be for the first semester and the classes who are very difficult to be taught online like labs or practicals yeah. those ones are going to be for the second semester so i think they're just being careful but they're hoping that everything not comes to normal but people can come to class and come back to normal normality Actually, we are also like staying online in Armenia uh, because it would be a lot complicated to combine like online or like doing like half half online or going to university. That's why they decided to put like more efforts to make the online classes more um, efficient. That's what and like we have a lot of professors who are not in Armenia and even uh, if they made a decision that we're going to be in campus. Uh, they won't be able to come to Armenia. That's why um, they decided that we're going to have a fully online semester for fall. And hopefully it's not going to happen for spring one. <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> um, I see that Amir joined. And if he has anything you know, to yes. catch us up on what his university did and how his online classes were, um, that'd be awesome. Hello, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I have to like reinstall the apps. Okay. So like um from my university in Malaysia, like because like each university has their own base to do their academic studies. So like for us, um they did extend the university a bit. I mean, like we should, it should be ending like this month. This should be the, the last month for the semester. But then they're extending it until August. And then for the next year, the government also has been uh, giving, giving the orders for the online classes. So like for the rest of the year, we will still have the semester will still be ongoing, but it will be online. So yeah, and but we are hearing like some rumors that they are opening back the universities. So yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. So, yeah, but then like about the program, um, you know, like I'm not sure about you guys, but do you guys have exchange students program in your university currently? Yes, we have. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, so like, are they stuck in in the university or they're back in your own country? It depends. Okay. Mm. Oh, it depends. All right. 
So like the same goes with our, in, our international students. Yeah, uh, but it's a bit sad because like they are stuck in the university and they cannot go out of the university. So like they only had food coming in to the university every day. They couldn't go out for sightseeing or something. And so for the for the international club, we organized something called as like uh, we introduce we introduce Malaysia, but in an online thing. So like let's say because like they had their time in Malaysia before this. So we say something like, okay, make a TikTok video for about what did you do during, uh, what did you like about Malaysia? And then they do something like, oh, I like to make, uh, to eat dodo, I like to dance in Malaysia, and I like the multicultural races and stuff. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty common thing. But yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing that we can do. So yeah. That's really cool. Um, So, you're, so the international students who had started last uh, spring semester, are they like they're still just like stuck at the university, or did you get new students for the summer, or did like because oh. for Southern all of our students went home, like oh. they went back to their countries, um, or something else was arranged for them. For the for the our students, um, they are really eager about like sightseeing in Malaysia. So like when I ask them, like they they have given the option like you want to go back or not, and then they say something like, no, we'll wait until the uh, until the uh, lockdown is over, so that after that we can go around in Malaysia. And yes, what they are wishing for is came true because when the lockdown is over, actually you can go travel in Malaysia, but with social distancing applied. So like right now, there are some students who stays and most of them, they went around Malaysia all by themselves. And it's good because like since the online classes, they don't have to attend the physical classes. So like when they were like eating at a restaurant at the same time, they're opening their laptop for the online classes while traveling. So like, yeah, it's a good thing also for them. Are you guys still in school right now? Yeah, I'm currently doing my assignment right now. I have to submit at 12. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, we finished in May, on like May 13th, I think. When we don't... Like in June, uh, 5th of June and something like that. When's the next semester start? Hmm? Sorry? When's the next semester starts? Um, September. September, oh, the same. Hmm. Ours Perfect. starts in August. August. Mm. Like at the uh, end at the end of August. At the end of August. Yeah. We start at September. We finish at August, we start at September. Oh my god. There's that one. Really? One. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. How long is your <laughs> so school <many> year <laughs> of holidays do you have? No, I mean, because like uh, since there is the lockdown and then the universities uh, decided to continue oh, okay. continue the semester a bit late. And thus, they don't want to like postpone the new students' uh, registration for next semester. So they just like, okay, that's just like giving you early break. Mm -hmm. So we have like early one month break before this, for this semester. But like, yeah, it's not fair, but. Who am I? I'm just a student, so yeah. I can't say anything though. Mm. Gosh. That's crazy. So does your typical semester uh, start in September and then go until December? Until January. And then, yeah. like, do you... Do you get a break before the next semester starts? Yeah, uh, we get like one to one and a half months for break. Oh. Uh -huh. oh okay. But then like you, you can, they're giving the break site. So like maybe you can find a part-time job or you, maybe you can go for traveling. Or maybe like, if you guys like want to go for, because like in Asia we have, um, we have many uh, NGOs. We are doing some kind of like forest restoration activities. So like we are accepting into all international students in in the world. So like they come in Malaysia and then they 
they live here for like one month and then that we go around in forest, forest and stuff. So like, yeah, maybe you guys can join if you want. What's the name of that? Like, what's the name of that program? Uh, rally. I think it's an international thing. Rally. Do you guys know rally? R A L E I G H. R A L E I G. Okay, rally. Gotcha. Okay, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the link. So yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I just have something to ask you. So like, how did your school? How can you say your school? Like, how good did did your school do at transitioning to online? Like. And um, how do they try to keep the community together online? Or do they try um, to keep the community together? If like, I mean, there's my supervisor in the group, so like, I have to be careful of what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I cannot, I cannot give back comments, but as a general comment, um, I think they are doing the necessary things, such as like, Immediately, uh, immediately uh, giving the order like for for the students who cannot who cannot go back, then you must stay at the school and we'll provide you with everything with the necessities like foods and Wi-Fi and stuff. Uh, at the same time, like when you're saying that online learning, I mean you're just saying that okay. You have the course online, like what you have to learn, and then like you have to take this assignment. You have to do some kind of assignment for certain marks. You have to take two tests, and then you have to take final exam. And what's your mark? So they have given this like, but then for the learning part, they don't really put a guideline. Like some lecturers only, some lecturers like recorded the video of themselves teaching, while some other lecturers just give slides. Okay, here are my slides. You read it, and then there's paper coming up next week. So there's no really a guideline. So you can say like the efficiency is there, it's not controlled. So yeah, it's subjective to say like they are good or not, but they are just doing the necessity thing. So so yeah, I mean some universities are giving comments like we cannot do online learning because it's not efficient. So we'll just extend the semester until the COVID ends and then we'll resume the physical classes. There are some universities like that. Which like some students say like oh but we want to graduate early we don't want to extend our studies and while some say that oh it's good because I couldn't understand the thing if I attended the online classes yeah but I don't know about you guys what do you guys think I mean I think it's really not that efficient I mean I really prefer being in person. And I've purposely never taken an online class because, you know, I just, I think there's a lot more discipline when you're actually going to classes. I do think also it's it's a good learning curve um, when you, you know, we went online quickly and people had to learn, okay, I need to set an alarm so that I show up to class on time if it's um, a live class. Or you set an alarm for when your assignment is due, so you're not yeah. turning it in. And I totally did that on one assignment, and my professor was like, no worries, I forgot to remind you, like no one else turned it in. So mm. I think professors were very understanding as we all adjusted to that learning curve. Um, I think it's like a very important tool for us to have as students to be so accountable for you know, online, but I also just, you know, I'd much rather go sit in a classroom, have that um, social element and, you know, be around professors. And I think for next semester, pretty much what's going to happen at Southern is the only classes I think that will be on campus will be ones like studio art or um, labs, you know, because for a lot of science classes you know you have to kind of have that hands-on you can't just tell kids to go and do that in their kitchen or something um but other than that i think it makes more sense for us to just be online because i don't want to have to go in and wear a mask all day um and i don't think that they're equipped necessarily like I just don't think that they want to have to go and install all of the necessary measures 
just for a class that really like, you know, students don't need to go in, they don't need to be staying on campus to do so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Talking, okay. talking, like, talking about like the science things. Like I'm from chemical engineering. So we have a lab session. So that for this semester we couldn't drop the course. So instead they give us like a video of how to operate the machine. And then they gave us the result and then they asked us to make a lab report. So I I'm not sure like if that's working for me. So because like I'll just find it online like the lab report for this experiment and then I'll just like copy the way all through and then I'll just change a few things. So like I I didn't I didn't even bother to watch the video. So yeah. But that was it. I hope my supervisor doesn't hear this though. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I hope you're not seeing this. Um for for the science I believe that like the online thing isn't as efficient um, in that like it, it, it yes it opens the way for students to like cheat and stuff like that but put mm -hmm. cheating aside like some people we don't learn like just from looking at a slide and reading it reading the slide you know like we want to know how to apply the concepts and how to use the equation so sometimes like you have to go and go on YouTube or something and watch a, somebody else teach it or watch a whole different lecture about the same material that you're learning in your online um, online class. And um, for me, like, it was a bit of a problem because, like, my professors would give out a PowerPoint and their voiceover on the PowerPoint and I'm just like, okay, it's not like I'm in class to explain to him, raise my hand and say, okay, can you explain that in a different way for me to understand? I don't understand this way of you, like how you're explaining it. Can you explain it some way, like a different way? So I had to just like, okay, this is how they explained it. So, all right, now I have to go and find a, a way in which I understand it. So, and then that applies to like, even when I got exams, like I didn't fully know how to apply the concepts so like I feel like my grade like on exams sort of kind of suffered because of that because of that not being able to raise my hand and say okay professor like I don't understand this way of um of explaining it like how you're explaining it so yeah I, I don't know I, it's not in, in my opinion it's not it's the best that we could do but like you know hey can't do anything about it wait I have a quick question I'm sorry. I'm, all right. Are you going to say something? Because if, if you are, I hold my question. No, it's okay. You can go. Oh, okay. Um, with student, like, um, are you the schools that have dorms, like the schools that have dorms, right? How are they maneuvering that situation? With, are they allowing students back to live on their campus? And are they going to keep them on their campus for next, um, for the upcoming semester? Or are they just not allowing any students to live on campus or like what are, what are they doing? Anybody? No? In Spain, oh. um, they don't know it yet. I think that uh, some students will be able to live in the campus because they have a residence there. But I, I don't know what measures will they adopt because they have really a big canteen so all the students can eat together. I don't know how will they manage to do this, but I hope they can stay there. <laughs> are, are they allowed to go out? I mean, can they? Yeah, like, uh, like, so the way how our school is doing is like, okay, they're allowing people to um, live on campus, but also while also trying to like, keep social distancing and all these different things mm -hmm. and so like how are you how's your school going about it like are they inputting any like testing that students have to pass certain tests before they can live on campus like um and how like my issue with like let's say southern um like bringing students back on campus to like stay on campus is like okay yeah but you have to understand like okay how are you going to tell a a, a red like a, a a student like who's living on campus to not go to another campus and go mm -hmm. like mix and mingle or whatever and then come back on the campus like you know what i mean not knowing 
who they're going around, what they're going around to do, like if they're interacting with other people who might have um, COVID and then that person exposed, then they come back on campus, expose everybody else. So mm-hmm. I'm just trying to understand like how your school, like what, had your school sent out any notifications, any emails, any type of communication about what to expect for people who would like to live on campus? Is it me? Is it? Hey, I mean, anybody. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, like for my part, um, so uh, at early stage, uh, the first is they set up the parameters. So like, um, we like for my university, we have like two entrance. So they just close one, and then for the another one, they had, they had the security to guard and take temperature, and also like, uh, stating that your business is into the campus. So like they have to fill in like because like in Malaysia we have this one kind of system. It's a apps where like for example you make a profile of yourself in the apps. So when you coming to a mall and then you scan the QR code, and then um, it will have a history of where did you go for the day for that day. So let's say that for example there's a COVID cases in your uh, in the places that you visited, then it will inform you on that day like you had you had um, potentially so might go for a checkup. So the same thing, it goes for our university. So like at the entrance, they had like, you have to check in using the apps. And then if you want to go for the department and faculty and stuff, you have to scan the apps also, uh, they scan the QR code at the places also. So like um, they had give us the general guideline about like how do we want to tackle with the COVID. And but the thing that they really that they really emphasize is like please don't come to the campus. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean that's the easiest part. Like don't come to the campus. Only if you are given permission, then you only can come. So yeah, other than that, the people inside the campus, um all they are uh, we are given something like you cannot I mean let, let's say in the campus you want to go out for jogging or something, you cannot do that. You can just sit in your room and then have your food. And then let's say if you're not feeling well, then you can go for the medical checkup because you also have some kind of like clinic or hospital. It's a, a little bit smaller hospital in, in the university. Mm-hmm. So like if people have RCS, then just go there and they will be quarantined. So yeah, oh. that's for my university. I can well, continue if you don't mind. Um, the situation in Armenia in our university was kind of easier because all the students are either from uh, the capital city where the university is or like from other cities that are closer. So they managed to go back to their uh, families or like to their homes. Uh, but those students who were living in the dorms, they were allowed to continue living there. Uh, of course, providing all the uh, all, all their needs. Uh, but I, we didn't have like a huge problem in this point because uh, those students living in the dorm were not that many. That's why we were like uh, fine with uh, the all, like we paid more attention on online classes rather than dealing with the problems of dorm. Mm. Are you yeah. living in the campus? Sorry. Are you, are you living in the campus or are you at home? Uh, no, I'm at home. Oh, okay. Well, I'm living at a student accommodation, which is not in the campus because we have students from different universities as long as they are in Liverpool. Uh, I haven't noticed that much change. Most students return home, so there's not a lot of people here. But the main thing is they start to clean more often and they put like um, disinfectant, the cleaning gels to clean your hands. a bit outside in the ask us to use it when we come in or come out. And that's the main thing. There haven't been much much happening. Um, and I know our university is going to create or creating masks. 
with the logo on. <laughs> I don't know what that for, <laughs> but apparently they're going to give that to some staff and some students, but I don't, I don't know how they're going to use it, to be honest. Oh, also here they are relaxing the rules quite a bit because even restaurants are going to be open on the 4th of July. So I think the cafeteria in the school and things like that for next year should be open. So for next semester should be open without problems, to be honest. In the US, um, we've actually already entered, I guess it's called phase three, which was on June 17th where people are even allowed to eat inside restaurants. Um, before it was, they could only eat outside restaurants, um, which personally I haven't eaten even like outdoors at a restaurant. Cause I just, I, you know, with the Spanish flu, it took at least two years before it really started going away. So I don't see this being done for quite a while but there's actually someone in my um hometown who has been developing uh i'm fuzzy on the details but it's not as it's not necessarily a vaccine but something that will like prevent you from getting covid and it's it's um already gone through animal trials and now they're going to be testing it on humans so hopefully something like that will be coming out soon but, you know, until then, like, me and my family have been playing it very safe. Like, we weren't even getting takeout for a while. Um, uh, my mom was, like, so worried about us getting, like, a salad or something. So if we got, like, pizza, we'd have to reheat it or something like that. So, you know, we're still being safe. But I also see, you know, as fall approaches, maybe us kind of moving backwards in terms of where we went, you know, like things kind of um, getting getting more strict again. Um, but who knows with our president? <laughs> um, I just, <laughs> I think that there's like, you know, there already is an increase in cases and there will continue to be. So I, I have no clue. <laughs> I actually have one more question to everyone. Um, do you guys know how your university is going to deal with freshman students? Because like any activities, how you are going to adjust them to the university? Because I guess the transition is like really challenging, even like in real campus, not just in online one. So is there any ways you're going to uh, represent your university or like organize orientation day? Uh, I'm in a, I was in a club in my university and we had like Zoom meetings talking about freshers actually. But the only thing we really emphasized was social media because obviously we can't do the fairs like we used to where lots of people came with stands. So we really insisted on social media for now just to recruit more people but I think it's going to be very difficult and the freshers will probably be aware that you know the situation is not like normal circumstances unfortunately I doubt they'll have the same experience we had mm -hmm. I see actually so, we have yeah, go ahead oh sorry um so I'm not involved in the planning of all of this, but I have heard that my university is still going to do orientation um, and they'll just do it online. Um, and if I were a freshman, obviously I would be inclined to take a gap year. Obviously that's not uh, like universities are strongly discouraging that. And if they do decide to take a gap year, they can't just defer I think they're going to have to reapply um, and it'll hurt so many universities. Like they're already struggling. They're already having a really tough time. Mm -hmm. And if they're working so hard to install like all the plexiglass um, kind of like protector things for professors to stand behind or, 
you know, like all the expensive measures that they might have to take for COVID, if freshmen do defer, that could send a lot of universities under. Um, so I think what, what Southern, like Southern has a great orientation, like, and, um, oh, I forget what they're called, but like the, the orientation ambassadors. The, so like they have a great team of those people. They're super enthusiastic. Like they just do a great job of, you know, making your, like making everyone comfortable when they are so like, scared um and I like I totally went out of my comfort zone at southern orientation so I'm hoping like I I have high expectations for them I think that they can really do a great job online with just getting students into smaller groups too and having conversations like this well, I'm actually going to jump in because I'm teaching on campus in the fall. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, you know, but I'm it's I have freshmen and uh, I want to give them the first year experience that they deserve, you know, so I, I'll suit up, I'll gown up, I'll wear masks, I'll do whatever I have to do. I will dip my hands in alcohol if that helps. But I want people in front of me. I want to, you know, give them um what they come to college for um but thank you all very much for sharing with us today it's been absolutely fascinating hearing how higher ed works uh in your respective countries um and what you guys really love about it uh even though we can't study internationally at this moment i think today's conversation has helped give us an idea of what it will be like when sometime hopefully in the very near future uh, when we can get back into international education um, so thank you guys for joining us today and we will see you next time bye thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.